Are you having ongoing stress and thyroid issues? Maybe you're wondering how the stress or cortisol affects your TSH. My name is Dr. Taranella, and in this video, we're going to break down that question, and specifically, we're going to look at some of the direct effects of cortisol on your hypothalamus and pituitary and how those can affect the TSH and some of the indirect effects of cortisol on the thyroid tissue and the thyroid hormones themselves and how these are related to the feedback signal that the brain gets. Overall, I expect people with high cortisol levels over the long term to have lower relative TSH levels. And I'll explain how and why in this video. So again, my name is Dr. Taranella and I make these videos to help you go beyond basic health, but they're not tailored specifically for any one individual. So please read this medical disclaimer before we jump into the video details. In this video, we're going to look at how does cortisol affect TSH. And in doing so, we're going to get a better understanding of how cortisol can, one, affect hormones in the brain connected to thyroid function, two, how cortisol can affect the thyroid function itself, and the activity of the thyroid hormones outside of the thyroid function. Specifically, we're going to look at cortisol's effect on thyrotropin releasing hormone and TSH in both the hypothalamus and pituitary, and how exploring these different elements will shape the production of thyroid hormone. So first, let's look at some of the uh, direct effects on the pituitary. If you don't know, cortisol is the fight or flight hormone. It also regulates our blood sugar, but cortisol is often associated with higher stress. So higher cortisol, higher stress go hand in hand. If you don't know if you have high cortisol, it's a good idea to check that, especially if you're dealing with ongoing thyroid issues, but it's good even independent of that to know what your cortisol levels are, especially if you have a high stress job, high stress environment, things like this. But anyways, elevated cortisol levels can directly impact the pituitary gland. The pituitary is in the brain and it's kind of a central regulating force in the brain and a central player in the endocrine system. It's responsible for releasing things like TSH. TSH is thyroid stimulating hormone. When cortisol is in higher levels, it can influence or disrupt the pituitary's ability to release that TSH. And that's basically disrupting the feedback loop that's naturally there between the pituitary and the thyroid. Normally what happens is the thyroid produces T3 and T4, mostly T4, and these feed back to the pituitary to tell it that we have enough or this is how much we have. Cortisol gets too high. It can disrupt that basically feedback loop. So the high cortisol levels can disrupt that feedback at the pituitary, but it actually can affect the thyroid function and TSH in much broader ways as well. It can also have an effect at the hypothalamus. So the hypothalamus has more of a top-down effect on the pituitary, and the way that works is the hypothalamus releases thyrotropin releasing hormone, or TRH, and the TRH serves as a signal to the pituitary gland, promoting it to produce TSH. Chronic stress can disrupt that signal as well, or cortisol can disrupt that signal and interfere with the normal rhythmic patterns of the hypothalamus. And in so doing, that cortisol can then affect how much TSH is produced at the pituitary. Cortisol can also have a negative impact on the thyroid tissue itself and interfere with the enzymes that are involved in the synthesis of thyroid hormone. For instance, thyroid peroxidase enzymes are the enzymes that take iodine and turn them into T3 and T4. And cortisol can basically dismantle or disrupt that thyroid peroxidase enzyme from working. The exact mechanism of this and how cortisol does that isn't fully understood. As with anything else, the effects on each individual can vary greatly. Another way that cortisol is thought to affect TSH is by interfering or changing the signaling at the thyroid hormone receptors and influencing how responsive the thyroid gland is to that thyroid stimulating hormone. And the last way that cortisol can affect TSH is through its effect on reverse T3. So cortisol plays a role in the regulation of the conversion of T4 and T3. 
If you don't know, T3 is the active form of thyroid hormone and is mostly converted to the T3 in the peripheral tissues where the body is going to be using it. However, elevated cortisol levels can actually lead to an increase in the conversion of T4 or thyroxine into an alternative form called reverse T3 rather than making the regular T3. And the reverse T3 is a non-usable thyroid hormone. So basically just gets degraded and then not able to be used or target the tissues for increased metabolism and the things that your body uses thyroid hormone for. So basically you get more of this reverse T3 and not enough of this regular T3. And this shift in the conversion of less of this T3 and more of this reverse T3 can basically contribute to imbalances in thyroid function, but also can be hidden if you don't look at the reverse T3 test. The specific enzymes involved with converting the T4 into either T3 or reverse T3 are called diodinase enzymes, and they each have different functions. The type 1 diodinase is primarily responsible for converting the T4 into T3, and these, these enzymes are tissue-specific in the Type 3 is responsible for converting the T4 into or reverse T3. So cortisol basically increases the activity of this type 3 diodinose enzyme. This type 3 diodinase enzyme may be higher in different tissues than others. Just to be clear, you have T4 up here and both T3 and reverse T3 are made via diiodinase enzymes. It's just that the reverse T3 is made with a structurally different diiodinase enzyme and the cortisol is acting to increase the activity of this particular diiodinase. So in summary, how does cortisol affect TSH? There are a lot of ways, but I think the main ones that we want to look at is how is cortisol affecting the output put of TSH at the pituitary and the hypothalamus, and then how is cortisol potentially interfering with the feedback of the T3 and T4 on the hypothalamus. So in the first instance, you have the cortisol that's basically directly impacting those brain tissues, and in the second sense, you have the cortisol basically interfering with either the production of T3 or T4, the binding of the T3 or T4, on the hypothalamus pituitary gland and altering the corresponding output of the TSH or thyrotropin releasing hormone. Remember T3 and T4 usually signal the hypothalamus and pituitary to modulate the TSH production. And these hormones work kind of like a heat or AC thermostat. The pituitary and hypothalamus are the thermostat and the T4 and sometimes T3 regulate how much of these hormones the brain is going to ask the thyroid for via the production of TRH at the level of the hypothalamus that then stimulates the pituitary to produce the TSH. And the stress-induced cortisol can override or disrupt this regulatory process. So the hypothalamus is kind of like the conductor that sends a signal to the pituitary, and in turn, it orchestrates the release of TSH. So how does cortisol affect TSH? Well, the impact on TSH and thyroid function is complex, but mainly I expect to see lower TSH because of the disruption at the level of the pituitary and hypothalamus, and that's despite having not enough T3 or T4. And you could think about it this way. When your body is under chronic stress, it's trying to balance itself out. So it doesn't want to be stimulated more. So cortisol is going to naturally blunt the typical feedback loop and de-emphasize the low T4 and low T3, and therefore reducing the TSH output. So overall, you're going to have a lower thyroid output. Now, if you're only checking TSH, you won't be able to tell that your thyroid levels are actually low. This is not going to be the same for everyone, but the longer your stress goes on, the more likely you are to have a low TSH and low thyroid hormone output. We need to recognize how cortisol affects the hypothalamus, the pituitary, the thyroid receptors, and also the conversion of T4 into T3 and how all these things are feeding back to one another. So hopefully that gives you a better understanding of how cortisol affects TSH. If you do have follow-up questions on this topic, drop them in the comment section. If you want me to give your question more time, attention, consider joining the membership program. With this, I'll be able to give your questions more time and attention. If you like the video and want to get more videos like this one, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to continue getting videos like this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.